everybody. It's Keith with Bob CNC. Welcome to Shop Talk, and I'm here with my best friend Bob. And I'm here with my best friend Keith. And what are we talking about today, Keith? Well, I, I was told we were going to talk about the new Bell Everman drive system. Well, that's good because I've made a presentation and I'm ready to talk about <laughs> You'd it. You'd almost think we had this plan. You'd almost think so. Yeah, but, but you, know, you don't know yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So I just want to say, first of all, if you really wanted to compliment me, and it was the superest, duperest compliment that you could give me, you would say, Bob, that design is clever, right? That would, that just, it would touch my heart, right? Well, it gives me goosebumps. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you got goosebumps. Jeez. So, Michael Everman <laughs> is the inventor of the Bell Everman servo drive, right. and I just want to say, on record, it is a clever design. Okay. And what do I mean by that? Why is it clever? is because it is simple and cost effective. It is a way to get CNC's to move in a linear fashion that is inexpensive, accurate, durable. It just has all of the pluses and very little of the minuses. So it is just an awesome design. So it's a clever design, and I just really wanted to you walk through it. You need to show us it. I'm going yeah. to. That's why I did the presentation. Well, good. I'm All not, right. I'm oh, you're not seeing it. it. No. Okay. There we go. Well, there we go. So this is the KL7 series model, right. and uh, it's a, a way to do a Bell Everman. It's got the same components, but if you type in Bell Everman servo drive, you'll see different ways of right. doing it. This is the way that we chose to do it. And this is uh, w what we're, we're, we're doing. So I just kind of want to walk through the system of why okay. it's good. Maybe compare it to a belt drive system. So here we just have one belt. Uh, it goes around some idler pulleys, comes up around a timing pulley that has teeth on it, and then goes around some idler pulleys. Okay, not to be dumb. Uh -huh. But it's different than a belt system. So I'm looking at a belt. That's yes. going around idler pulleys, which we use on the E3, E4. Right. And around the timing pulley, yes. E3, E4. Uh -huh. So not a lot of difference. Yeah, there is not a lot of difference <laughs> at this point. Okay. So we need a lot of uh, teeth engaged around yes. the timing pulley. So we don't really need but maybe two of these. Actually, the E4 has one, and it's kind of shifted here. Right. The only thing that we're doing with the timing pulley is trying to get more teeth engaged. Okay. Okay, so you can imagine on this simple design, if it was fixed over here, and it's fixed over here. Right. As soon as you turn this around, this whole thing has to move back and forth so you get your linear motion. Right. Now, for the E3 and the E4 or lightweight CNC machines that don't have a lot of weight that you're trying to move around so you don't have the inertia, uh, this is a beautiful design. It's cost effective. It's simple. It works well. However, when you get into a size like a, the KL33 or the 44, we have more weight, bigger motors, uh, and you're wanting to move faster it becomes a problem with belt stretch. So in this system, you can see from this point to this point, and again, uh, we have a four foot by four foot machine, so the belts are five foot long, right? And plus the little loop around, and plus- So if you had a loop of, of belt material, you're right. saying, that's where, you know, it's sagging and all that kind right. of stuff. Well, if you took a belt and you clamped it on the end of a table, yeah, and then you pulled it to where it was snug, oh, yeah. and made a mark, and you just pulled really hard, you will see that you can actually, you can stretch that belt a little bit. Well, it's like a big rubber band, yeah, right? We've done that. Yeah, so uh, so here's the system. Again, works great for uh, light gantries or moving light components, but as soon as you get some uh, weight and get or, or more powerful motors, then all of a sudden you get belt stretch. So what do you do? So this is, this is the cool part about the, the belt Everman design. So he takes a bottom belt, and he fixes it to the structure, whatever your structure is. In our case, we're gluing this down to the plywood uh, right. belt surface. So yeah, we have some 3M tape that's made for polyurethane. So we're right. going to recommend that you coat the wood with polyurethane. We're using polyurethane belts. And this stuff, you'll love this tape. It just sticks like you wouldn't believe. Um, yes, it does. Yeah, it's, it's, hard, it, to get, it's yeah. hard to get off if yes, you it, mess it up. It, it is. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, we stick that. It's fixed to the uh, frame. Right. And then we drop the Everman down, Bill Everman uh, assembly down, and now we have a forced mesh. Now I got a question. Okay. Because, all right. I understand that this is meshed here. Okay. But the illustration is misleading because you talk about forced meshed here. Why isn't this considered forced meshed out there? Well, these actually could be uh, not even meshed at all, and it wouldn't matter. Okay. It only matters after the idlers go through it. So you want your mesh here. It's fixed. It can't move. Okay. And it can't move here. And then also, it's wrapped around here kind of snug. So the only thing that matters in this design 
is from here to here. All now, right. as it moves this direction, then this part of the belt is working. But at this point, the belt from here, 100 feet that way, 100 feet that way, it's not doing anything, right? It doesn't matter. There are no limits in length here because you have a fixed belt, right. okay? So the, the cleverness of this design is you have the force mesh here. Now your belt stretch is from this point to this point. Dumb question. Understanding that this is force meshed in a in in the in the kind of belt drive we have in the E3 four okay. E3 and four, what would be considered force mesh? Only that, only the tension by the uh, idler around the uh, timing pulley. That's it. Yeah. Well, the yeah the timing pulley that has the teeth. That's the only thing that's in mesh. Okay. So here we have that's in mesh from here to here. From here to here, and then of course when it wraps around this. Now as the motor moves, right, the idler pulleys go back and forth with the gantry or whatever you have fixed to this, and creates a new mesh, a rolling mesh, if you will. Okay, I like that better. Rolling. Okay. Okay. But anyway, so mm -hmm. as you can see, then your only your only belt stretch is here. So it doesn't matter if you have a four foot or later we're uh, talking about coming out with an eight foot. Yep. It does not matter. No belt stretch. Same design. All you need is longer belts. So again, clever design. We are so glad to have it in our KL series. What are the practical applications? Implication is the wrong word. Application. How does this affect the, uh, the KL uh, 733 and 744? What can we do faster? I mean, I know we've got more size, and yes, there's the inertia thing. But right. what, what can we do faster that we couldn't do there? Well, we could move, uh, we actually were testing at 1,500 inches a minute. Uh, we had the resolution backed off a little bit so that we could get there. We backed that off to 1,000 inches a minute is, is what our firmware is going to do. And it's really because of the resolution and how fast the microcontroller can send pulses. Uh, the uh, gerbil firmware on an Uno can only run at 30 kilohertz uh, max uh, step frequency. So, that, so we wanted to stay well below that so we didn't miss steps. And that ends up being a nice thousand inches a minute. Uh, the other nice thing that we have is, you know, you can turn your acceleration. I think uh, when you uh, watch some of our videos of our KL series moving around, you'll see it, it zips pretty good uh, for a large machine. Uh, right. I mean, you know, our E3 and E4 zip around pretty good, but they're light. Yeah. So when you can be heavy and zip like this thing, uh, what's the difference around. in depth of cut? Uh, the depth of cut has nothing to do with the Bell Everman. It's just the fact that we have more powerful motors. But the uh, KL7, we're cutting at like 0.1 uh, inches per pass with a, a 1 8 inch uh, double flute, straight right. flute, uh, at 150 inches a minute. That's what we're running for production. Uh, we've cut faster than that, but for us, for uh, tool wear and all the other things, 150 inches per minute at 0.104 inches per pass is, is what we're doing. Okay. So... Anyway, guys, uh, that's the Bell Everman. That's why I think it's so clever. If you have any questions on this design, I would be glad to answer them. I love talking about this design. I love it when I find a cool, clever uh, design, and it's just awesome that I can actually put that into uh, our design for the KL series. So until next time. Yes, and also we have an awful lot of material that we published about the KL 733 and 44. On our website, we've got manuals that are already uploaded, downloaded, whatever loaded, so you can take a look at it. And again, uh, get a hold of us at Shop Talk at Bob CNC if you got any questions. Till next time.